So let's talk a little bit about HVAC equipment itself. Let's begin with HVAC equipment indoors. So there are many sources of HVAC noise in indoors. The outdoor parts that can get indoor sound, uh, I'm sorry, for outdoor units, um, that sound can come from the supply fans. It could come from return and exhaust fans. It can come from compressor noise breaking into one of the other airborne paths. It can also come from compressor noise uh, creating pulsating fluid, which is then passed into the building in the refrigerant lines. With indoor units, uh, the noise can come from chillers. It can come from uh, variable air volume boxes. It can come from your fan coils. Uh, noise can be induced by air turbulence, and this is particularly a problem with high speed flow and undersized ducts. Likewise, very sharp duct bends also generate a great deal of turbulence that can turn into noise. And if the, if the uh, turbulence is low enough in, in frequency uh, or pulsation rate, then it can induce actual duct wall vibration or oil canning. And finally, there are many, many paths by which the structures can vibrate and then re-radiate the sound indoors. Let's talk about some of these paths indoors. So let's imagine that you have an HVAC system uh, in a room indoors. It could be uh, outside but still separated by a wall. It could be on the roof separated by the roof ceiling system. So this is in essence, even though this looks like a specific example, it's very generic. You basically have the unit on one side of a wall and a person on the other side of the wall, a receiver. What are some of the paths? Well, the vibration from the unit can go through all of the structures that it has access to and then re-radiate into the room as structure and noise. The most obvious path is noise coming through the ductwork and passing right out through the supply grills. But it can also come out of the return. The, the, the sound doesn't care whether it's going out the supply or the return. It will go both ways just as happily. And finally, uh, the, I'm sorry, then the third way is breakout noise. There's sound of relatively high pressure moving through these ducts and it can actually pass through the walls of the ducts so that even though a duct may be passing down a hallway um, and have no registers locally, the sound can pass through the duct walls and into a room and, and be perceived as noise. And finally, uh, the structure itself will allow noise to pass through it, and that's a combination of airborne and structure-borne paths. And so in HVAC, we need to worry about all of these potential paths and so if you have a report of something being noisy, it's, you need to be careful to try to figure out, well, what are the potential paths that are involved? There are lots of different ways to describe sound in rooms, and it, there are several that are most common in HVAC work. Primarily, there's often a desire for a very simple one-number metric for sound or noise. And really, dBA, a sound level in dBA in a room, is a pretty good descriptor. It works relatively well in being correlated by its level to how annoyed people will be. Um, if it's lower, people are less annoyed. If it's higher, people are more annoyed. But that doesn't really well describe the timbre or quality of the noise. It's frequency spectrum content. And so um, we use noise criteria curves. And so you'll often hear about NC ratings. And these are curves that are based on how people hear sound in rooms. Um, they relate the sound level and the frequency distribution. And we take the sound pressure level in octaves and we map it out on a chart against these curves and we note wherever the spectrum touches the highest numbered curve, that's the NC level. Uh, unfortunately for various noise criteria, there are several different ones. There's noise criteria, balanced noise criteria, noise rating, room rating, room rating, room criteria mark two. Um, these have all shown up in various uh, requirements for HVAC systems. The most common two are noise criteria, the NC curves, and the room criteria, which ASHRAE rec has recommended in the past. Uh, 
One important thing to note is that you cannot plan as an equipment manufacturer for a specific noise control rating. The only thing you have control over is the sound power and the shape of the spectrum from your equipment. Because in the end, the noise criteria depends on the room itself and the amount of the size of the room and the amount of the acoustical absorption in the room. But what are some of the kinds of things that you can do to reduce indoor noise from HVAC systems? Well, number one is if you have the opportunity, planning is your best friend. You must assume that there will be noise and you have to plan mitigations in advance. You have to pay attention to the equipment location in your space planning. And you need to size your equipment for low noise as well as proper capacity. Once installed, a low noise unit will do you a lot more good than trying to retrofit a noisy unit. For rooftop systems, you would definitely want to avoid locating immediately above some sensitive space like, like uh, an office or a, a doctor's uh, examination room. You need to use vibration isolation. You need to make sure that the mass and the weight and the vibration are mounted over columns of the building, not in between them. And it's often good to add a big thick mass uh, on which the unit sits. That mass will help. It doesn't really absorb the vibration so much as it blocks its path. In terms of mechanical equipment rooms, in other words, having all the uh, large noise making equipment inside the building, again, avoid locating those rooms near occupied spaces. Use large air spaces and cavity insulation in the walls, ceiling, and floor surrounding the equipment room. Uh, make sure that your wall and floor ceiling assemblies have a lot of mass so that, again, they break that path. And decouple the floors and ceilings between a mechanical and equipment room and any sensitive occupied spaces. And pay a lot of attention to your ductwork. Be sure to use attenuators and silencers if they're necessary. Plan on using absorptive linings for at least a fair amount of the main uh, duct path. And then if you have breakout noise issues because of thinner gauge ductwork, there are many products available that allow you to wrap the ductwork and absorb and block the sound. Let's move on finally and take a couple seconds to, to look at HVAC equipment outdoors. Again, looking at sources of sound, when you're concerned with the sound outdoors, you've got chillers and compressors, condenser fans, and then fan, other fans related to your units if you've got an air handling system that's outdoors. Because some of those fans have exposure to the, to the outdoors, although in general, very rough rule of thumb for an air handling unit, the, the, uh, the compressors and condenser fans in general would be louder than noise coming from fans handling indoor air. We worry about sound outdoors because of noise limits and regulations. These limits on noise generated by HVAC equipment, they can be defined by many different uh, sources. They could be the client uh, itself. It could be a national regulation, a state regulation, a county regulation, a city ordinance. It could be some other jurisdiction like a, a homeowners association. There are many different sources. And unfortunately, they have all different kinds of ways of describing the limits. In general, the most common limits outdoors are based on it. Some maximum permissible sound level in with A weighting. So it's a DBA rating. And it's most frequently assigned as being measured at the equipment owner's property line. So you can think of it as how much of my noise am I handing over my property line to the neighbor. Additional specifications, especially for city ordinances, might be to have separate limits for day and night or day-night com combined limits. Uh, sound levels in octave band frequencies over some range instead of just a single DBA rating. Uh, and sometimes that they, they use instead of a fixed level they'll say uh, they'll give a maximum exceedance above the existing ambient sound level or relative level these types of ordinances are very difficult because defining what the relative level is can be a very big challenge and there's often a tremendous amount of disagreement even amongst uh, competing experts over what the existing ambient level is in a given area how do you go about controlling the outdoor noise from your units? Well, in general, 
you have the same two choices as you have anywhere in noise control. You can reduce the source of the noise by selecting equipment that inherently makes lower noise, or by adding treatments on the fans and compressors of the equipment itself, or you can alter the path of the sound. You can change the equipment's location. You can make use of distance. Remember, sound decays with distance. Uh, most commonly, what you'll see people do is install noise barriers of some sort around the unit. That can be very effective, but it has to be planned out properly. It has to be executed just right, and it's not always as effective per dollar spent as you might hope. What can you do at the source? Well, always remember one of the most important rules of HVAC noise, slower is lower. If you can slow things down in the system, they will, in general, make less noise. So, let's say you can add a VFD control to lower your condenser fan speeds so that if you're not demanding absolutely maximum full cooling capacity at any other time, you're not demanding capacity, everything can slow down and thus quiet down. And, in general, higher capacity systems can be uh, spec and run at slightly lower speeds. You can look into low noise options from your manufacturers such as quieter condenser fans or low noise compressors and typically they come at a premium. There, there is often a, a price associated with that. You can put uh, baffles and attenuators over your condenser fans. That's a, a very common on very large fans. It's less common on smaller fans but here you see a case where there are neighbors looking over the units. And so the noise that normally would never be a problem on a rooftop is suddenly coming right in their windows and an attenuator is necessary. Or compressor blankets and enclosures. Um, they're very popular as an attack on compressor noise. However, it's very difficult to do it right. And to, quite often these compressor blankets do not work as advertised, not because of poor advertisement, but because they have to fit absolutely perfectly with no gaps in order to be effective. Because again, sound gets through gaps. It's very valuable to be able to interrupt the path of sound outdoors. Remember, distance is your friend. If you're putting in uh, something like a large rooftop unit, orient the condenser and away from sensitive receivers. Use the physical structure to block that sound. Avoid using line of sight to sensitive receivers. Use what's available to you. Uh, mount your units so that they'll be blocked by the roof from line of sight instead of locating them toward the edge of the roof where the receivers on that side will have line of sight and get more noise. If necessary, install barriers, but remember, they need to be high enough, they can't have gaps, and adding absorption or getting sound absorbing barrier panels can be a lot more effective. Finally, because it's HVAC equipment, you always need to be concerned about letting it breathe. So you may have to invest extra dollars in getting uh, air breathing absorptive louvers to allow air to flow into the barriered space, but still have sound attenuation. York, high performance environments for life.